Baltimore Regionals is just a couple of days away, and we need to talk about some decks that I think are either really good picks or decks that you might see at this event. Hey, Nick from Nine Card TCG, and today we're talking about the Baltimore meta, and I kind of want to keep this a little bit short. I just want to talk about five decks that I think are either good picks or ones that you're going to encounter. And this is just my, strictly my opinion. Feel free to disagree with me on this. I think at the very least, the top three are pretty solid. And I know a lot of other uh, really good players and content creators do agree with this top three, at least roughly. So, uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. But the other two are just really my opinion. And uh, I guess we'll kind of get into it. But before we do, if you haven't already, do me a favor, subscribe, leave a like and a comment. Those things tell YouTube this is a good channel and other people should watch it. I want to know what, I mean, you don't have to tell me what deck you're playing for Baltimore. But if you're not going to Baltimore, what deck would you have played? Or if you are going to Baltimore, what are some decks that you considered but maybe aren't playing? I, I don't know. You don't have to tell me any of that. Let's just... Let's just take a look at deck number one. And all these decks are from the Limitless website. And I have a link to each person's deck list, like who, who created it or in the tournament they played in the video description. So if you want to check out more, a little bit about like their matchups and all kind of stuff, that information is there for you. The first deck is Reggie Gigas. And, and while I personally don't really care for it, a lot of people really like Reggie's. Uh, they think it's a fun deck. And I think it's not a bad format for it uh people are playing things like ice rider so reg steel can one shot that people are playing a lot of v pokemon so reg ice with the blizzard bind is really good uh arceus gets one shot by reg rock if they don't have a, cho a big charm uh, or if you have a choice belt then you know it doesn't really matter but you also have reg Alecky. choice belts are going to be knocking out things like palky of v stars you're going to be putting a real big hurting into a pikachu v uh, a flying Pikachu V anyway. So for those random electric types that people might bring to deal with Palkias, you have Regirock. Um, Reggie Drago just has a fantastic ability and drawn to your four cards in your hand. There's just not a lot that the deck is good for, but the big problem is consistency. When you set up, the deck can work really, really well, but sometimes you just fail to set up. And I, I don't know why people really enjoy playing this deck. Every time I have played it, I have really run into a lot of issues but the deck got significantly better with pokestop because it's going to allow you to dump energies into the discard pile easier because you just dump the top three cards of your deck and hope you hit an item or hope honestly you hit energies and, and maybe an item or so but yeah you just get those energies in, into the discard so you can use reggie gigas's ability which lets you accelerate three special energies from your discard to any one of your reggies in play if you have all six reggies on the field so Using a combination of scoop up nets and uh, all that kind of stuff, you're able to either reuse Reggie Giga so you can do it twice. If you have a scoop up net, you can use Reggie twice for some reason. Um, or, you, you know, there's just a lot of really interesting things in this deck. Uh, a lot of ordinary rods, scoop up nets, ultra balls. Again, the ultra balls are really there over quick balls because we want to discard when we do have four quick balls, but we don't need the ultra balls because we have quick balls. Simply... To just it's just that's a discard energies and stuff uh, that's really all it is a couple of bosses orders some cynthia's i do like this list although i don't really like reggie's in particular uh path to the peak can really shut down opponents uh you, you but you do struggle to flying pikachu if your opponent is able to get that flying pikachu up and running this list in particular doesn't have something like escape rope where you can like escape rope force another pokemon up and then play boss to get the flying pikachu to put in big damage with the regilecki you're not going to one shot it and then you would have to do it again the next turn anyway because they're going to hit you with max balloon and now you're just in a lot of trouble because you can't get hit by pokemon v after you or the flying pikachu you can't hit uh with the basic pokemon after the max balloon so uh, Blizzard Brian becomes a pretty good option, but they're going to be running bosses and stuff as well. They have a good draw engine in b -Burl. You really don't. It just, it becomes very, very challenging. And I expect to see something like Flying Pika pretty frequently. Spoilers, it's already on this list, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Reggie's. Not a bad pick. It's one of the other benefits, and I think something that's important is the fun factor. Um, people enjoy playing it. 
like I said, not me, but people enjoy playing it, and it's super budget friendly. And the budget friendly does not mean bad. Just because something is budget friendly does not mean it is a bad deck or you shouldn't play it for a regionals. It just means the cards aren't expensive and there's nothing wrong with that. I know for a fact I'm gonna get hate for this, but I think Arceus Duralon is not a bad choice. Yes, it, it, it can be inconsistent just like Reggie's, but when you get it going, it works. And, and people dislike Arceus Duralon for two reasons. One of them is valid, and the other is not. The people, the reason a lot of people don't like uh, something like Arceus Duraldon that I think is ridiculous is because the play or the strategy is the same against pretty much every deck. Start Arceus, power up a Duraldon, and then just wall your opponent out of the game while you do big damage with GMAX Polarization. There's nothing wrong with having a very linear, straightforward, this is all I want to do gameplay. This really just isn't, uh, you know, when you're playing in a regionals, it's nine rounds in day one. And then you go into day two and you're going to play, you know, 11, 15 rounds total. Sometimes you don't want to be playing something as intense as uh, an Inteleon deck. You don't want to be playing something you have to think constantly and it's a struggle. Every round is a battle and just... Sometimes you just want to do Arceus Duraland on things, and, and this allows you to. Professor's Research, a lot of bosses' orders, Avery can be annoying for decks. Um, the one thing I will say, though, can be a little challenging with all the Marnie path running around, simply because if they Marnie and you, you know, path at a peak you and you don't have a stadium, you are in a lot of trouble if a Duraland is not already set up. Now, if one is set up, Hyper Potion plays and Crystal Cave can help, but if you have the Crystal Cave, then you know it's not as problematic because then your Skyscraper ability is back in uh, online. The real issue is outside of like Reggie's and Arceus decks, uh, Mew has Max Miracle, so it's not like it's not like they can't hit you with a special energy, uh, like having special energies attached, but they're not going to do as much damage. They do have Power Tablets and Choice Belt to ramp up that damage, but you know, that one-time use, so they might have uh, some trouble getting through a second Duraladon, but um, Palkia doesn't play special energies outside of maybe a capture energy, and Palkia is really popular and really good. So, you know, that's one of the challenges, I think, Palkia, but, you know, is also not putting any real damage onto your Duraladon because they can, you know, they can put, like, 180, and then you just Hyper Potion away 120 of it, so can be a little while before they knock out something and you're just constantly hitting 220 you have the arceus there to help hit for you know 180 200 damage something like that so uh it's not a bad play it, i don't i really don't think it is it's just sometimes you don't get anything and you're just draw pass draw pass you look at your hand you're like i just i can't win this just gonna scoop and move on to the next one but that's an important skill to learn and i think you might learn it with Arceus Duraladon. A deck that I actually think is going to be real, I mean, I think Arceus Duraladon is gonna be a pretty decent pick too, but now we're getting into the top three decks, like decks that you really either should play or need to know about. And the first one is Arceus Flying Pikachu plus something else. This individualist is playing both Dark Package and Decidueye. Now the, the, the Decidueye is nice for Arceus Mirrors and Mill Tanks because uh, close quarter shootings on the Decidueye V goes through Mill Tank's ability, so that's really nice. The Hisuian Decidueye V can one shot Arceus V stars because a lot of times they're not running Dunsparce anymore, so you don't really, you know, you just hit real hard. Uh, and then you have the Dark Package with the Mew, the uh, Crobat, and the, the Crobat V Max because you still respect Mew. And now you got you have an out to one shotting Mew, so you know, I, I think it's pretty good. Uh, the Flying Pikachu deals with Palkias, it deals with Reggies and Lunatones and all those single prize decks. B Brawl is a really nice draw engine. You don't have to think as hard as you would with like Inteleon. You could still just draw every turn. And of course, we have Arceus. Arceus is just a really good card. I know Palkia has kind of pushed it down and the, and the Return of Mew has kind of pushed it down a little bit since we're not pairing it with as much Dark. But this is a deck. I mean, not this one, but a deck very similar to this. One Worlds, and uh, I mean, it should be taken seriously. So either know it or play it. Um, 
it's just really good. I don't know how I feel about putting both Decidueye and Crobat into this because it's just a lot of energy types. Um, but Crobat attacks for two Dark and a Colorless. Decidueye attacks for a Fighting and two Colorless. Pikachu is Lightning, double Colorless. Arceus is three Colorless. So for the most part, your Pokemon can attack for just one energy of their type and a DTE or any other two energies. It's just the, the, the Crobat that requires the double dark. So not the hardest thing in the world to power up, especially with an Arceus, Raihan, things like that. Uh, although it would be a lot nicer to just be able to go Raihan to basic energy and search for DTE, attach KO. That would be lovely. So maybe something like the Galarian Moltres would be nice because then Raihan attach Dive Flame Wings would get you there in one turn, whereas you can't uh, uh, Raihan attach to a Crobat and still attack that turn unless you have an energy on it already. But Crobat, you know, allows you to draw cards, which is really, really nice. So, you know, this is where it comes down to preference and your personal, your thoughts. Do you think Mew is going to be really popular that you need to include the Dark Package? Uh, are you worried about them being able to boss or catch up your Crobat before you're able to power it up? Do you have to worry about, you know, Mew and Decidueye, which, you, you know, starting a Decidueye, having one on the bench or something like that, uh, when they easily take two prizes? All things to consider. Speaking of Mew, it has been making the rounds lately, and a lot of people are talking about it as a really good pick, and I kind of agree, as sad as that makes me, I was kind of hoping that Mew would be out of the format but it's just so strong that we just can't get rid of it uh, even when dark decks were running around I mean, it was just it's really it's still it's still really strong so uh mew know it know how to play it and if you're going to be playing mew uh, i was listening to the um like a rage podcast and piper was talking about it. if you're going to play mew you should really know how to play the mirror match. And uh, I think that's really good advice. As someone who does not play Mew, I can't really give a ton of advice on how to play Mew or anything like that. But if a really good player who knows Mew tells you to know the mirror match, know the mirror match. But you, you can see this list includes Oracoria, which is something that has been left out. This is one of those Meloetta-less Mew decks. Meloetta-less Mew. Uh, while I do really enjoy that Mew does not have Meloetta because you don't have to worry about the turn one donk when your opponent comes second, uh, you won't necessarily know which version of Meloetta uh, of, of um, Mew that your opponent's playing immediately. Now, one indicator is that this list does not have a Fusion Strike energy. It only has four double turbo energies. This one does include Lost City and Big Power Soul. Cards that you will not see at Region at Baltimore because Lost City is not legal for Baltimore, and Big Power Soul is only in here for the uh, for the Giratina V Star, something that, or and also potentially Sableye, cards that are also not legal for Baltimore. So uh, you won't see your opponent playing these in Baltimore. Like I said, it's just just a deck I found on Limitless. Uh, so take that as you will. But Mew is just so powerful, being able to hit 210. Turn two is really, really strong. Uh, now with the Oracorio, you have to hit 210 on Genesex. You have to hit 330 on Muse. Not particularly hard if you're hitting either one of them for weakness or if you have an Arceus deck. You can still really just DTE choice spell boss up a Genesex and you're still hitting for 210. It doesn't really matter. Mew, same thing. DTE boss, it, it, you know, you have to hit for 210. It doesn't really matter. Um... Uh, you just need the choice belt on the Arceus to get the one shot. You would need the choice belt on the Arceus to get the one shot on the Genesect. Anyway, unless you were running Zigzagoon. Cool thing about this is you can use abilities on these Pokemon since they don't have Fusion Strike energy. So your Quick Shootings, your Zigzagoons, your um, whatever the... Oh, well, I feel so bad for getting the name of Umbreon's ability. Dark Signal. You can Dark Signal if you were playing an Umbreon deck. Uh... You know, you, you can hit them with abilities, but, you know, you may not know right away. If you see them attach a Fusion Strike Energy, it probably is the Meloetta version. If you see them go straight to a DTE uh, and then they fill up the bench with no Meloetta, you might be safe on that. But, you know, especially if they could choose to go first, sometimes uh, Meloetta ones, they don't mind going second because they can get that turn one donk. So, uh, all things to keep in mind, Mew, really strong, know it, respect it, or play it. Every list is going to have Palkia. 
It's just, it's inevitable. It's impossible to not have or talk about Palkia. It's one of the decks that if there's, there's no reason, if you're looking to do really well, there's no reason you shouldn't play Palkia if you, if you have the cards and know how to play. It can be a challenging deck to play, but it's the what's one of the most powerful decks in the format. Um, if Mew high rolls, Mew is just as strong, if not stronger, but if Mew doesn't, they flip tails on their crams, they flip tails on their, uh, their catchers and stuff. Palkia can, can take it pretty easily. Uh, it just does so much damage. It has so much going for it with the Shady Dealings and the Era does. Battle VIP Pass. It has an incredible ability. Capacious Bucket makes it, like, that much better. Um, once this... Once rotation happens and we lose D-Block, we lose Capacious Bucket, we lose the Shady Dealings line, uh, we lose Capture Energy, we lose quite a bit of cards that this wants to use. Uh, I don't know how good it stays... But, for now, it's really good. And we, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves because we have to worry about tournaments right now. Rotation isn't until early 2023. That's all we know about it. So, can't get too ahead of ourselves. Even decks like Memory Capsule Jolteon Arceus decks, it's so easy for these decks to deal with it. Now, this one does not have a Tool Scrapper. But, they can just Radiant Greninja your Eevee if you're going second. Like, Palkia is going first, and you put down that Eevee. They're gonna use Radiant Greninja to knock it out, I can almost guarantee. Once that Jolteon is in play, and, you know, you have the Memory Castle, maybe you have a chance, if your opponent doesn't have double cross, like this list in particular doesn't have cross switchers, it doesn't have tool scrapper, uh, so, not sure how susceptible this one would be to uh, Jolteon. Maybe, maybe they're just in trouble, especially if you can keep a low bench. You might have a pretty good chance, but a lot of times I, I personally would recommend having a Tool Scrapper uh, just so you can Irida for it. You can find it immediately, get rid of that, and then your abilities are back online. Even if they do use it the next turn, like they get the Memory Capsule back down again, you probably were able to deal with the Jolteon or at the very least... Progress your board enough where it doesn't matter all that much anymore. Um, you know, you would use your Star Portal that turn most likely to set up another uh, Palkia. But yeah, this deck, I mean, ultra, ultra powerful. Especially with the, you know, the Echo Horns. A lot of times they include Cross Switchers. So th this is a little bit more of a unique list. Uh, but the Temple of Sinnoh is kind of annoying. At least as someone who plays Arceus and things with special energies. Uh, Path of the Peak can be kind of annoying. They don't really care about pathing themselves once they establish their board. They don't need the Greninja anymore. They don't need the Star Portal. And nothing else has an ability. So once they get their board set and ready, abilities don't matter to them. It's just the Shady Dealings, which path doesn't turn off. The Jolteon would, so that could be problematic. But Palkia is just so powerful. Most of the time, they can just go Shady uh, Irida for a Cross Switcher and a, uh, like a, a Shady Dealings and Talion. And then they go Echo Horn, Cross Switcher with the Shady Dealings and Talion. They Echo Horn a V, Cross Switcher it. And now they can, you know, if they had the Palkia in the active, promote the Intellion, scoop up Nedit, get the Palkia back into play, bench the Sobble so they have the Drizzile and the Intellion for something else. It's just, it's it's a nasty deck. And, uh, you know, it's one, it's it has a huge target on its back because it's so good and powerful. I won't, I mean, I would expect... Palkia, Mew, and Arceus something to be the top three most uh, played decks. Palkia probably being number one, Mew not far behind. And then the Worlds deck is probably, again, I think they're all going to be somewhat in the same realm of popularity. But man, you, you better be prepared. If you're not playing Palkia, you really need to know it uh, and how to play it and, and you know, things like that. I, I just, I can't stress that enough. So there you go, five decks that you either should play or will very likely encounter at Baltimore. Do I think you're going to encounter Arceus Doral? I'm probably not. Maybe maybe a newer player who just wants to get out there and play something. They might be playing the Reggies and the, uh, the Arceus Doraldons. But as you start progressing in rounds, rounds three, four, five, six, etc., you are going to be hitting more meta decks. You're going to be hitting the Dialgas, the Archipicas, the Palkias, the Mews. Like it's, it's just 
inevitable. How many you hit is totally random, just based on your matches. But yeah, I, I, w I would know these decks, consider playing them, uh, and, and uh, you know learn how to play against them. But that is going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Found us informative. If you did, like, subscribe, comment. Check out me on Twitch because I'm I'm there live streaming most days of the week. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much. And I will see you next time.